In the 60 for Sax book, there is a piece called Echoing Sax, and Echoing Sax is the book's first foray into 6 8 time. So, 6 8 time sounds like this one and a two and a one and a two and a. So, what we have is two groups of three quavers. This is totally different than 4 4 time and 2 4 time, 3 4 time up to this point. That's called simple time, and you would count it like one and two and three and four and. 6 8 is called compound duple time. We have two groups of three quavers. One and a two and a, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six. In any way that um, helps you get that feeling of two groups of three and it will help. So echoing sax sounds a little bit like this, and all the way through you want to be thinking these groups of three quavers. Da, 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 da. <laughs> So we com it's comprised of a dotted crotchet and a quaver followed by a couple of quaver rests. So that dotted crotchet, remember, has three quavers buried inside it. Okay. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Okay, so now we have a crotchet followed by a quaver. Again, that crotchet is worth two quavers. So you have to think. Uh -huh. If you were to really nut out a 6 8. So, this is the dilemma that you have. 6 8 is supposed to be two beats to the bar. One and a two and a one and a two and a. But sometimes that's just too fast. Sometimes it's easier just to spot quavers. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Ultimately, in the end, you want to bundle those groups of three quavers into this idea of a beat. You want to make that beat flow. sense of a lilt, this da 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 da. Now you will get quite complicated looking bars, for example the last bar, what do we have? We've got a quaver, followed by a quaver rest, followed by a quaver, then another quaver, which is the last note of the piece, followed by two quaver rests, just to complete your six quavers in the bar. So how does one count that when it's, it's all like a mess of notes? Well if you go back to your sixes, one, rest, four, five, rest, rest, or one, rest, play, play, you know, just you, you aim for the quavers. Nothing. But then you want to try and bundle them into groups of three. So the first group of three is just the ba, ba. And the next one is kind of all by itself. So probably not the best example. Okay. So that's the timing aspect of this piece. Now you may have noticed that I was pulsing out the quavers. You don't want to be doing that if you're in a performance, you want to smooth it out. That was more for demonstration purposes to hear that quaver pulse coming through, because that is your subdivision. One and uh, two and uh. You want to always have that ticking over in your brain. Okay, stretch goals. We have a C in here um, in bar five, six, seven, bar seven. We can ascend and have, we have an opportunity to play the side key C. So rather than playing first finger, middle finger, which is a bit clumsy, you want to use a psyche C. And it's a nice clean way to um, to approach that fingering. And there's a few opportunities in this piece to do so. And that is echoing sax.